Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime Answers. Uh, we're just going to jump right into your questions and throw a little bit of editing in this video just to, because I feel kind of bad. My lighting setup's not that good. My face is a little too dark. Hat on, hat off. Uh, it is what it is. So let's just uh, get first to the questions from Patreon. The first one comes from Corey Bohm and he says, you suddenly become aware you are living in Westworld. <laughs> good, sh good show, by the way. I haven't watched that the last season yet, though. Uh, you need to immediately figure out if Eric and Edward Norton are host androids or guest humans. Which category does each of them fit in and why? I don't know that I'd be able to tell. I think that's the entire point of Westworld is you're not supposed to tell who's a host you know who's an android and who's human that's the entire point of it i don't think i could tell i think the only way to tell would have to be to cut off a limb and i don't know that i want to cut off a limb of eric or uh or <laughs> or poor edward so uh, i don't i don't know that i could actually think which category they would fit in i mean they, the hosts are so uh, in, in that show are like so human like you know it's supposed to be like this um facade of like what the future could be if android technology and, and robot technology ever got that far but yeah i uh i don't know that i could tell and i think that's the point so cory Baum then asks inspired by the 90 day diet that i'm currently on uh what are your favorite veggies and your favorite preparation methods uh my favorite veggies um i like i like uh pickles pickles are a big one i like uh carrots uh cucumbers uh, steamed broccoli, that's actually a big part of the diet as well, like steamed broccoli with a little bit of a, a little bit of salt and pepper and some garlic powder. Um, those are kind of like my go-to veggies. Uh, some people enjoy more of the lettuce kind of stuff or the kale. Uh, that's not really my kind of thing, although, you know, if my diet has a day that calls for that, I'll have some. Um, as for my favorite preparation methods, um, I don't really have like a favorite prep method for the diet on the whole um, because I basically... I prepare all of my food almost a day ahead of time. Uh, I don't cook it all and then eat it usually because I'm too busy uh, between my job and the kids and all that stuff. So reality is that diet-wise, I just make the food ahead of time. I usually pan fry or pan cook almost everything in this diet because it's, it's a pretty simplistic diet. Uh, it's very simple foods uh, in small amounts several times a day. I mean, you get your three main meals and two snacks, but it's very simplistic. There's some protein shake stuff in there. Uh, and you just kind of get enough to keep you satisfied throughout the day, uh, and into the next day and into your workout that I, I usually do at night now. So yeah, Corey Bohm comes up with another question. Again, if you're a patron, you can get all these questions in right on our discord server. And he says, as CEO of Nintendo of America, you are asked to come with a pre-order promotion to be offered during E3. Uh, what idea do you present to Nintendo of Japan for approval? Absolutely nothing because I think pre-order promotions are garbage. I, I don't think they should be doing pre-order promotions. Um, so my proposal to Nintendo Japan would be, hey, let's not do pre-order proposals. Let's just create great games with great advertising. Corey Bohm uh, comes in with another question. He says, Tropical Freeze versus Kirby versus Super Mario U versus Crafted World. Rank the Nintendo platformers on Switch and explain your choices. This actually is not that hard although crafted world having only the demo it's not fair to even include that in the rankings uh but tropical freeze to me is the one of the best if not the best 2d side scrolling platformers of all time uh after that you know kirby super mario crafted world crafted world i almost need to set aside because i don't think you can talk about that with just a demo but with kirby and super mario brothers u super mario brothers u deluxe is a better game than kirby so it, it would go tropical freeze super mario brothers u then kirby Corey Bohm also gets another question in. Uh, this might be his last question. And he says, You are stranded on an island with every system ever made, but only five games. What five games do you bring? Well, we're talking about games that have to be infinitely replayable, but I'm on an island, so I assume there's no internet connection. Uh, so a lot of multiplayer games aren't going to matter. So things like Smash Bros, as fun as they can be on your own, not really going to matter in my case. So it's going to have to be infinitely replayable single-player games. And there's not really infinitely replayable. It's just what games do you enjoy replaying over and over again. So Secret of Mana will make the list. Breath of the Wild would make that list. Uh, three more games uh, stuck on an island uh, need to be entertaining forever. Man, uh, you know, maybe Super Mario 64 um 
all system. I'm trying to think if there's something from some other platforms that maybe I want to throw in there. Probably one of the Final Fantasies. I'm not sure which one, but there would be a Final Fantasy game in there. I'd have to go back and start looking at them. So that gets me up to four. And then for the last one, it, this is tough. Um, because a lot of games, when I think of replayability, I always think of multiplayer. So thinking of single-player games that I care to replay as someone who doesn't really replay games, uh, I think it has to be a game that I just have a lot of fun with and a lot of challenge and for me i think i'm gonna have to go with uh well super mario kart 8 deluxe because uh even against npcs on 200 cc there's just a lot of replayability there and i really like that so um even though it's a multiplayer game it's one that i have a lot of fun with in single player all right, the rest of these questions come from our people on YouTube. Uh, the first one from Waluigi. Waha, <laughs> what a name. Says, do we think we are getting any new Joy-Con colors this year? I just finally got the yellow pair, so now I have neon blue, neon red, and neon yellow pairs. And to answer that, yeah, of course we're going to get new colors. Uh, there's there's going to be colors that match different games. I'm sure there'll be like some green set or something that matches Link's Awakening, something for the new Pokemon game. Yeah, there's going to be new colors. New colors are just going to be a constant as long as Switch is Nintendo's primary platform. Uh, Shadow King 1982 says, What would it take for video game movies to be good? Also, what are your thoughts on actors from movies that get criticism basically attacking fans of said franchises? Um... I, the second point, I'm not sure what you're talking about because I don't pay attention to interviews. See, when you don't pay attention to interviews um, or you don't pay attention to like these actors' Twitters, you don't really end up caring or knowing what the drama is. You just enjoy the films or don't enjoy the films. Uh, but in terms of what it would take for a video game movie to be good, I, I'm always of mind that video game movies need a good script, obviously, uh, need a good setting, um, some respect for, to the IP, but still doing your own original work. Uh, and I think that's like the big thing. A good script... With, with the right actors in a good setting that at least pays homage to the work but does its own original thing. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that is really how you do it. Unfortunately, somewhere along the line, we don't get a good mix of that. Some, sometimes to stick too close to the games, and in doing so, games aren't inherently built for a movie format, so that doesn't work very well. Uh, some just don't put in the right actors. So a lot of them have absolutely horrendous scripts, so that's really what leads to us thinking of them. And some of them are not very original. So, yeah, all of that is really how... At least to me, you, you get a successful video game movie. Um, so as for thoughts on movies, I get, get criticism basically attacking the, you know, the actors, attacking the fans. I don't think attacking the fans ever gets you anywhere. Um, I don't, you know, you could disagree with, with opinions, but I think that's just them defending themselves uh, because they were really proud of that role and they're upset that people aren't happy with them. I don't know. Um, it, it, it's tough. They face so much. I mean, even me as a YouTuber, like I face a lot of criticism. These actors, uh, like trying to play these roles in highly respected franchises. Like imagine if Aladdin, that movie is really bad. The kind of backlash the actors for Jasmine and Al and, uh, well, obviously, uh, the genie Will Smith there. Uh, imagine the backlash they would get if that movie is really bad. So, uh, it, there's just a lot that they go through that someone like me would never have to. So I try to put myself in their shoes and understand that like they're just they're trying to defend themselves and uh, honestly it just makes things worse and that's what I've found out so I don't know hopefully uh, that's just something they learn from in the future. Uh, this one comes from Joe Schmo. Why does uh, Nintendo have a wealth of small franchises like Sin and Punishment, F Zero, Chibi Robo, Doshin the Giant, Pikmin, Golden Sun, Punch Out, Advance Wars, Warrior Land, Punch Out? I don't know why Punch-Out's listed twice in Paper Mario. But for some reason, Nintendo just ignores them. Or they make... I was going to say, they don't completely ignore all those games. Some of those games had recent entries. Uh, but he says, uh, but they make these bad spin-offs that are a slap in the face to fans. Can you tell me what you think is the reason Nintendo just doesn't care about these franchises, yet they give so much attention to bleep like 1-2-Switch and Labo? They don't sell. What do you want me to tell you? Bottom line is, all those games you listed, they don't sell very well. They're more expensive to make, and they don't sell well. So cheaper spinoffs or um, games like 1-2-Switch and Labo that move millions of units but doesn't cost Nintendo a fortune to make, that's what they're going to make. Got to remember, Nintendo's still a for-profit company. Uh, just be happy they even still make Metroid games because Metroid games are another one that really don't sell that well.
and cost Nintendo a lot of money to make. Heck, they just rebooted Metroid Prime 4 without any guarantee that it's ever going to sell more than 2 million units. So you have to remember, all those franchises you listed are franchises that just do not sell. I mean, the answer's staring you right in the face. Just look at the sales data. It's very obvious why Nintendo de-emphasizes those, those IPs. Um, Mitchell Clyborne says, do you want me to send another fun box? My wife and I have been thinking of other cool things. Sure, go for it. I'll never tell you what to do. I'll never tell you what to send me. Never ask you to send me anything. But yeah, I do have a public P.O. box. Uh, for those who are wondering, uh, if you go to the About section of my YouTube channel, there is the P.O. box. So if you would like to send me something, you can. You no obligation. No, you don't need to. Um, but I do make videos about it when people do send me stuff in. Uh, Nintendo 64 is King says, where do you think the Mario series should go from Odyssey? Would you be in favor of a sequel like they did with Galaxy to save on development time? Or do you think an open world Mario game is possible a la Breath of the Wild where all of the stages are connected to one another in a vast setting? I'd love to see that kind of experimentation. Um, um, where do I think that the Mario series should go from Odyssey? Well, I think there should be a Super Mario Odyssey 2. But besides that, um, I don't even think to save on development time. I just think people really want more Mario Odyssey. So, like, give the people what they want. Uh, but as for, you know, an open-world Mario game, it's obviously possible. Uh, but I think that it kind of goes against the nature of Mario. I don't, think, I don't ever see Mario as a fully open-world game. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Fully open-world levels, yes. Fully open-world game, mm. So, uh, I think it's always going to have a hub or, or something of some sort. Um, it would be interesting to see them go back to where the castle's a hub, like in Mario 64, but I don't know. I mean, I like the direction Mario's going in, so there, I, I don't really feel like I need to tell them what to do or have any hopes and aspirations. Um, I think with Galaxy and Odyssey, they've kind of proven to me that they know what they're doing, so I'm going to let them be and just do what they want to do. I think, I think Mario is best when Nintendo does whatever they want to do with it. Uh, Robert Schleicher, uh, sorry if I butchered that name, he says, do you think a Switch Mini would be backwards compatible with DS slash 3DS games? The DS library is so huge, can't just abandon it. Um, do I think a Switch Mini would be backwards compatible? No. Uh, can I understand why you would desire it to be? Sure. Reality is Nintendo Switch hardware is uh, not the same hardware that's in a DS and 3DS, so they would have to include extra chips inside of the Switch Mini, which would therefore make the Switch Mini more expensive, and ergo make it less attractive on the market. So uh, I don't think they're going to make it backwards compatible at all. Nope. Sorry. Uh, and that's assuming it even exists. We don't even know if Switch Mini's real. We don't know if Switch Pro's real. All we know is the Switch we have now. Uh, Dungeon Master Z390 says, If Nintendo doesn't design their console to be a hybrid, do you think they would return to the two-pillar system they had before? You mean where they have a um, handheld home console? I don't think Nintendo's ever going to return to a time when they had a handheld at home console. One or the other will be completely abandoned someday. That's just my take on it. Obviously, never say never, but I'm saying never because it's just what I believe. Uh, Marinos Basiadakis says, how important is it for the Switch to add SNES, Game Boy, and GameCube games, etc. to the Virtual Console? I don't think it's important at all. I think a lot of people really care about it. A lot of people would like to see SNES and GameCube and N64 and all that added to the Nintendo Switch Online service. But in terms of important to Nintendo, they don't care. And, in, and important to people who own a Switch, I think there's a lot of people that would care, but I also think the people that care about things like Virtual Console or uh, Retro Gaming are a small number of people in comparison to the people that just want new games on Switch. I think more people care about the next Pokemon, the next Mario, the next Zelda, the next Metroid, the next Pikmin, uh, the next Xenoblade, the next, uh, you know, Damon X Machina that's coming, new IPs. A lot more people care about that than they care about bringing old games back. So um, I think it's important for some for some people out there, but I, I don't think Nintendo places a big importance on it. And I think that's what's really frustrating to people that want that stuff, but... I don't know what to tell you. I wish they were more like Microsoft in this way. Microsoft seems to have a pretty deep respect for their back catalog of games uh, that Nintendo um, doesn't seem, at least a deep respect to the users for their back catalog of games that Nintendo doesn't seem as uh, amped to do. Now, granted, Nintendo has a lot more systems to deal with than Microsoft does, but still. I don't think Microsoft's going to abandon backwards compatibility on the next console either, even if they don't have a disk drive. Um, you know, they'll, they'll let you be able to somehow with an Xbox or whatever, Xbox one, like, you know, register it to your, 
user profile and bring it over or something. They'll, they'll figure out a way, or they'll just use Game Pass or something. Like You'll always be able to access the old games on Xbox. Uh, I don't know why Nintendo doesn't let, let us do that, but it is what it is. At first, I thought it was just because they were going to release more like NES Classic, SNES Classic, N64 Classic, GameCube Classic, Game Boy Classic, but they're not. At least they said they're not, so I, I don't know. Um, BatNav10 says, Do you think Nintendo would ever make an adapter for the Switch to play 3DS games? Never say never. They've done this before. Uh, you guys remember the Super Game Boy? You guys remember the attachment for uh, uh, the Super Boy? You guys remember the attachment for the GameCube? Um, I think N64 had a way to do it too, and stuff like that. So it's possible, but Nintendo hasn't made an attachment like that in a long time. It didn't exist for Wii or Wii U. So I, I don't think they're actually going to do it. Could they do it? Yes. Are they going to do it? No. Because the hardware to play 3DS games isn't inside the Switch. They would have to emulate them. And I don't think Nintendo is interested in making a 3DS emulator for Switch. Uh, Edward Norton says, Are you going to see Captain Marvel or This Is Us? I don't know what This Is Us is. I'll have to look that up. Um, Captain Marvel I've already seen. And I liked it. It was pretty good. Better than uh, people were trying to make it sound like to be because they didn't like the Brie Larson for some reason. I... I don't know. I try to stay out of all that drama stuff on social media. So honestly, I thought Captain Marvel was pretty good. Um, I don't. I'm not gonna say it's like one of the best Marvel movies, but it definitely wasn't. It was better than Iron Man three, uh, and I like Iron Man three. Uh, I like it more than most people, but I can admit Captain Marvel was better than that. And I think Captain Marvel needed to happen. I, I can understand now, uh, after seeing the movie and seeing the bonus scenes, like why Captain Marvel was necessary. Oh, and the new trailer as well for the next Avengers, like. This movie needed to happen before the Avengers happened. And if you pay attention to the comics, you kind of knew that too. But um, The Mind of Thomas, last question, says, Do you watch the Pokemon anime? Not anymore. I haven't watched the Pokemon anime in like 20 years. So I watched the seasons like 1, 2, and 3, and then that was it. So I'm sorry. It's not, for some reason, it didn't stick with me like SpongeBob. Like SpongeBob, I still watch to this day. But not, not, not Pokemon. I don't know why. I can't really explain it. So, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Prime Answers. I want to thank you all. Uh, you guys are wonderful, and I will see you next Tuesday. I shouldn't say that. That's a little little meme thing. Uh, I'll see you guys next weekend with another episode of Prime Answers. Peace out.